Okay, so welcome back and we're going to continue on with our journey into organic chemistry and start adding a few more functional groups. So this means we're going to be meeting a few new homologous series, so different families of compounds, and this will change their basically the way they behave, their properties, both chemical and physical, are altered by the different types of functional groups that they have. So when we're talking definitions, we need to be able to define key terms. And um, one of the terms we need to be able to define is actually what a functional group is. So we define a functional group as any group of atoms or atom that is attached to the main hydrocarbon chain um, that gives it some different functionality. So it's responsible for its chemical properties, and in a lot of cases, its physical properties. So we will look at a number of them. So this slide shows you some of the ones that we will look at, alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, esters, and carboxylic acids. So I highly recommend you make yourself a reference sheet which has all of them on them because there is quite a few to learn. These are all the different ones that we will learn as we come across them in IB. Um, some of them we just have to be able to recognize, like our amines, nitriles, and arenes down there, the phenols. But others we actually have to be able to name and draw up until about a C6 carbon chain. So um, in particular, we will look at things like aldehydes, ketones, our alkanes and alkenes, which we've already looked at. But um, these new ones, the carboxylic acids, esters, um, we will need to look at in more detail. So let's get started. So we've already defined a homologous series as being any hydrocarbon that, where the family differs only by a CH2. So when we look at the alcohol um, homologous series, we're talking about in the case of just one alcohol group, that would be a homologous series. Um, if we put a second alcohol group on there, a second hydroxyl, um, it would become a different homologous series because we have two of the functional group, not one. So it differs by more than just a CH2. But when I'm talking about hydroxyl group, I'm talking about the OH group here. This little dash means that it is attached to a carbon chain in some way, and we usually denote that by an R. Okay, and it is a hydroxyl group. You will be asked to identify the names of groups as well as the names of families. So the hydroxyl group here, if I was asked to circle it, I would circle it like this. This is the hydroxyl. The family of compounds that it belongs to is alkanols or uh, the other term we use is alcohols. So the family is referred to as alcohols, but the group that makes it different from our normal alkane that we see over here with butane is this hydroxyl functional group. So when we name these, it's the same process as we did for our number of carbons and double bonds and everything like this, but this time we're going to change our suffix to ol. So where this is butane, because we have one, two, three, four carbons. This would now be butan. Okay, so this is my four for but and all single bonds. And then I've got on this carbon one here, butan one ol. So I need to put the number in to give me the location of the hydroxyl group off my chain. Okay, we need to know our general formulas. So an alcohol will always have the formula CnH2n plus 1. So that's like uh, it being an H2n plus 2, except one of those hydrogen bonds is now goes out to the oxygen, and then we have the hydrogen on the end here. So it's CnH2n plus 1 OH, showing the functional group that we're interested in. Okay, so the same as we did for all the others, I want you to pause the video and uh, have a go at doing your um, series of alcohols up to hexane, remembering that um, we use the mnemonic monkeys eat peeled bananas to um, remember our one carbon, two carbons, three carbons, four, and we've got meth, eth, prop, and bute. So pause the video and have a go. Hopefully you have something that looks like this, um, where you have been able to fill in the names, the semi-structural or condensed structural formula plus your molecular formula for each of your alkanols. Um, okay, remembering to keep the zigzag conformation, and if we've got a bond to an oxygen, we're going to have one less hydrogen on that carbon than we normally would, so we don't have a terminal CH3, we've got that CH2OH, and remembering to put in the 
one like I missed out here on the hexanol in the end of each of your names and also that we can move them along so if I was going to draw propan 2 ol I can put it on the second carbon chain second carbon in my chain along here okay just like when we dealt with methyl groups okay so if you think about it we said that all our hydrocarbons were nonpolar and therefore that means that they would have dispersion forces only when they were um, being uh, melted or when we're looking at the boiling points holding the, the molecules together so when we have an alcohol we have now added in this polar hydroxyl group where sorry about that where the electronegativity is now going to be drawn towards the oxygen because of the lone pairs on here and we'll have a dipole making this slightly positive and the oxygen slightly negative again also because we have hydrogen bonded to oxygen this is now capable of forming hydrogen bonds which means that when we look at the boiling points of alcohols when we compare them to alkanes not only do they increase as the chain size gets longer just because of the increased dispersion forces but also they are higher than all the alkanes because of the presence of the alcohol group so this means that they have stronger dispersion forces in the presence of hydrogen bonding because they now have polar groups this leads us to volatility. So volatility we've talked about in terms of the ability for a uh, liquid to turn into a gas. So things that have stronger bonds will have lower volatility, whereas things that have weaker bonds will have higher volatility. So things like petrol, you can remember you can smell really easily. That's because it has a high volatility. We've got low boiling point uh, hydrocarbons, which means that they easily and readily turn into a gas. So alcohols will naturally have a lower volatility when compared to the corresponding alkanes of a similar size. Okay, so let's have a look at this one here. And this is just basically explaining everything I've just told you. Okay, so when we compare the two, we get this higher trend for alcohols than we do for alkanes because of the hydrogen bonding that um, alcohol molecules can form with each other. This one's showing you the hydrogen bonding in ethanol. Okay, and we need to be able to explain these kinds of things in written questions in our tests. The other thing that we see because of hydrogen bonding is because water can form hydrogen bonds and now our alcohol, our hydroxyl groups can form hydrogen bonds. This means that alcohols will have a higher solubility in water, remembering that like dissolves like, so water is polar, the alcohols are now polar, so these will increase their solubility. But we still have these long hydrocarbon changes. If I'm talking about something like one octanol, which is going to have eight carbons, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I've only got this one little hydroxyl group. It's not going to have enough pull to drag this entire molecule into the water. So we start to see the solubility drop off of our alcohols okay as soon as we get it up to about carbon 4 carbon 5 whereas you can see with our alkanes our solubility stays low all the way along just as we had isomers with alkanes we also have isomers with alcohols okay so we can move the hydroxyl group along the chain so here it's on carbon one and then here it's on carbon two so they get a different name with the number specifying the position on the chain have a go at um, naming this one and let's see what you come up with so we should be able to look at our carbon chain we want the longest contiguous carbon chain so it can be one two three you could also number through this way if you wanted it wouldn't make a difference you'd get the same name but in this case we have a methyl group hanging off my main chain and a hydroxyl group coming off my main chain so i know it's going to be an alcohol and i have to have um, something denoting my methyl group here so three is my longest chain so it's going to be prop it's an alcohol so it's going to be propan 2 ol because it's on carbon 2 the other thing I have on carbon 2 is a methyl group so this becomes 2 methyl propan 2 ol hopefully that's what you managed to figure out as well
So we've been through this. This is just your rules in case you need a reminder and to put this in your notes, okay, of how we go about naming the alcohols and just remembering to change it to an OL on the end. And that will have first priority. So we always number, um, if we've just got uh, an alcohol and methyl groups, we'll always number from the end that gives the alcohol the smallest, the hydroxyl the smallest number. So the other thing that changes with our isomers is the properties. Okay, so as we change the level of branching, so from a straight chain to something that may have a branch on it, like this, the properties change. And just you can see here with butan-1-ol, butan-2-ol and 2-methylpropan-2-ol, this is the different levels of branching. What we get is a change in the boiling points. And this is because the molecules as we get increased branching can't stack as well. So they're not able to have those stronger dispersion forces. They don't get close enough to each other. So with less stacking, we have weaker dispersion and weaker, uh, so weaker intermolecular forces causing our boiling point to drop. The last bit of our alcohols, and then we're going to leave it here for this one and um, what we're going to do is we're looking at classifying alcohols as primary, secondary, or tertiary. So where we put the alcohol and the level of branching gives us a different classification. So it can tell us something about the nature of the alcohol group. You'll notice here a primary has two hydrogens attached to the main carbon. A secondary has one hydrogen attached to the main carbon and a tertiary has zero hydrogens attached sorry, to the main carbon. So we're looking at the carbon that the hydroxyl is attached to. These are groups denoting any CH2, CH3 kind of combination. So it could be a CH3, CH3, CH2, CH3. But it just basically means that this carbon is bonding to three other carbons and the hydroxyl, whereas this one over here is bonding to two other carbons and the hydroxyl. This one will bond to one other carbon. Everything else is hydrogens and the hydroxyl. So if we have two hydrogens, so just one other carbon, that is a primary alcohol, so that will be at the end of the chain. Okay, secondary alcohol is going to be somewhere along the chain, and a tertiary alcohol is going to have three other carbon groups coming off it, so it's going to be in the middle of a center bunch of branching. Okay, so at the moment we just need to be able to classify these as primary, secondary or tertiary and then we'll talk about how it changes the way they react a little bit later on. So that's it. Hopefully you can practice uh, naming your um, alcohols and mix in some methyl groups and otherwise with that as well. So good luck and I'll see you in class.